Tips on the Grill, sponsored by Don's Meat Shop. Last time we told you about making some delicious pastrami with this delicious brisket we got from Don's Meat Shop. So Don, I think we're about ready. And again, tell us what makes this brisket so good and so unique, other than the fact it comes from you and it's all trimmed by hand by you. Well, we sourced only the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going for the best quality we can buy. And really, when you think about it, as you mentioned a moment ago, the amount of meat you get versus the price, pretty good deal. It is. All right. So what we're going to do here is Donnie's going to start with a little bit of rub on the exterior of the brisket itself. And he's going to pat it in nice and neat. And this is just a preliminary rub for this. You'll see what I mean by that coming up in just a moment. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Go ahead and put a little bit more of that on there, Don. And what else do you need for the brine? Obviously, you need some liquid. So what we have done has gotten about three, three and a half quarts of water and brought it to a rolling boil. And up here, you see some of the other spices that will go into the brine itself. We have got packed brown sugar, kosher salt, curing salt, you may have some curing salt, but if you don't, get some. A little, though, goes a long, long way. We also have got some coriander seeds, mustard seeds, black peppercorns, and some ground black pepper. So here comes the fun part. We're gonna take the lid off of the pot. Don and I are gonna put these in here one by one. There goes the brown sugar. What is this, Don? That's the kosher salt. Next, we have this curing salt. And again, a little bit of this will go a long, long way. Coriander seeds, you don't want crushed, you wanna get the seeds. And the same thing with the mustard seeds. And last, we have the black peppercorns. And then, the crushed black pepper. Feel like sneezing? It's gonna be a work of art. Once you have all the spices in the water and you stir it to make sure it is thoroughly, thoroughly mixed, you want to put in about three or four cups of ice to sort of flash cool it. It won't flash freeze it, but it'll flash cool it. Mr. Rains, the floor is yours. Oh, yeah. Good enough. Stir it around a little bit more. Oh, yeah. It smells really good. Yeah, it you does. can almost smell like a pre-pastrami, if you will. What we're gonna do, what Donnie's gonna do, is put the brisket into the pot. Simple as that. Oh yeah. Just leave it in there. Now what we're gonna do, and I know it sounds strange, Donnie, we're gonna leave this in here. We'll transfer it to another container, but we'll leave it in here for seven to 10 days, which sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. That's how they make pastrami. You wanna turn the brisket itself every two days, and then you wanna put it on the smoker. All right, Donnie, the brisket's final resting place before it hits the smoker, and then our stomachs, and that's the part we're really looking forward to. Man, and then we're gonna pour this hopefully without spilling any or splashing any. Oh, yeah. And you know, if you want to put somewhat of a unique spin or a unique flavor on this brine, you can always put some apple juice in it. You can put a little brandy. I like the apple juice. Remember, not the apple cider, apple juice. All right, brisket covered in brine, lid on the bucket. This does go in the refrigerator for, again, seven to 10 days. We might make it a little longer just because we can. I'm Chip Chapman for Don's Meat Shop, and that is Chips on the Grill. Chips on the Grill, sponsored by Don's Meat Shop.